all serious divers watches should have this, but very few do. Stick around to see what this is all about. Now, before we get into the details, remember to hit that uh, like and the subscribe button so we don't miss out my next video about affordable watches. Thank you! I wasn't paying much attention to Certina before the Super PH200 meter reinterpretation came out in 2020. That watch really appealed to me, but not enough to actually get one. But when I saw the reissue of the Big Brother, so to speak, DS Super PH500M, well, that's quite a tongue twister of a name, isn't it? It really immediately caught my attention on the next level, so I kept my eyes open for a good deal. And a few months ago, I finally got this one in mint and unused condition for only $500. $500? And that's a bargain for a Swiss-made automatic from a reputable brand. And with these kinds of specifications I'll talk about today. Certina has been a part of the Swatch Group since 1983 and has a long and rich horological history all the way back to 1888 when the two Kurth brothers started watch production in the Swiss town Grenchen. Routine as a brand has been doing very well in the Nordic Europe region. Especially here in Norway, they seem to be everywhere in all kinds of malls, next along with Seiko. I know that this is not a fact all over the world. They have recently just re-entered the US and they're also not at all represented in a lot of important markets as far as I know. I count 68 countries that they are represented in on their website. The name Certina is taken from the Latin word certus. Oh, certus? Certus? Anyway, it means certain or assured, underlining that this brand is about quality and reliability. And it fits the brand well. They produce sporty and tough watches at fair prices. Many Certina models carry the DS name. A DS is short for double security, nothing more fancy actually. And Certina watches have been carrying this name since 1959. That's 65 years. That's way older than me. Easily put, the double security is achieved by using an O-ring between the case and the movement to provide shock resistance in addition to the Inca-Block conventional shock absorber. This might not seem like a big deal in 2024. But rest assured, that was a pretty big deal in 1959. Pretty, pretty, pretty big deal. Sotina's rich history of horological innovations and expeditions could be a video of its own. But that's perhaps more for History Channel. So let's dive into the Super PH500. It's a reinterpretation of the Super PH500 from 1969, which was used in a scientific underwater habitat the Tektite experiment. Tektite was an experiment performed by the US Navy NASA et al. in 1969. Four aquanauts spent 60 days in an underwater habitat 15 meters below sea level. In addition to exploring the bottom of the sea, the main objective of, of the experiment was to study the behavior of the scientists under these conditions. The Super PH500M was evaluated according to 13 criteria and it received the rating excellent six hey, times. This is turning into a history lesson you didn't ask for. Perhaps you need that like a hole in the head. But anyways, you probably learned something new, and that's always good. There's always room for more knowledge in your head. So there you go, you learned something new today. You're welcome. But let's move on to present day. The modern Super PH500M was reissued in 2021. Perhaps not a newsworthy watch anymore, but nevertheless, it's a watch worth your attention. It certainly caught mine. First and most, the design got my attention. The design is, after all, what attracts you first, unless there's a real horological significant innovation you anyways can't afford. The design reminds me a bit of the Omega Seamaster and the Omega Planet Ocean. And that's some mighty fine designs in my eyes. This is an ISO 6425 certified diver's watch with a 500 meter water resistance. And as you can see on this certificate, they guarantee this exact watch is tested to withstand water tightness and resistance at water overpressure of 37.5 bar. That's equal to 375 meter water resistance. That's not 500 meters. So they must feel pretty confident about the last 125 meters. This should probably cover my diver's watch needs anyways. The Poematic 80.611 is quite an interesting movement. It has 80 hours power reserve, and it's based on the ETA 2824-2, but it has a few tweaks. The beat rate has been reduced from 
28,800 to 21,600 vibrations per hour. This gives the Powermatic 80 the power reserve of 8 hours compared to the 2824s, only 38 hours. 8 hours of power reserves, that's pretty great. And it actually works too. Many times I have picked up the watch expecting I need to set the time and date and wind it only to find out it's still running. The Powermatic 80 is laser regulated from the factory and not equipped with a standard Etacron regulator that the 2824 has. It can be serviced and regulated contrary to popular belief on the internet. Don't believe everything you see on the internet. My local watchmaker assures me this can be regulated and serviced. It's just a little bit more hassle than with the typical other movements. It features a Nivacron hairspring, that's actually a titanium alloy. This is making it more resistant to magnetic fields. It features a steel escapement and not the plastic escapement that has caused a bit of havoc on the Powermatic 80.111 and that movement is found in the TSO PRX. All this technology, the accuracy is still only plus 5 to plus 10 seconds on a daily basis when I wear it. And that's pretty average in my book. Do you have experience with the Powermatic 80? Let me know in the comments below, thank you. Now, the date complication, that's quite impressive. It shifts like this, around midnight. There we go. That's always a satisfying experience. And this underlines the overall quality of the watch. That's always fascinating. And it tells a bit about the quality of this movement. Now for the special feature that this watch has, all serious divers watches should have this. But first, let me tell you what's bugging me. There are two things that keeps on bugging me. Number one, crowns digging into my wrist. Number two, vessels on the loose. Vessels that take the tour on their own without me instructing them to do so. I might have some issues here, but is it just me? Am I just very unlucky? Or is this like typical unwanted vessel behavior? The Sutina Super PS500 has a bezel lock feature, meaning you have to push the bezel down to turn it. This bezel lock feature means that you really have to push the bezel down to turn it. There's no way in hell that the bezel will move unless you really, really want it to. Because the bezel lock on the Sertina Super PH500 is super hard to unlock by accident. You can't really unlock it by accident. And I can assure you, you really have to mean it to use it. Because it can be hard to use even when you intend to use it. But for its purpose, that is good. At least this bezel will never take a tour on its own. For those of us that doesn't use the bezel for diving purpose, this might seem like both overkill and nitpicking. But I guess the same could go for all other aspects of watch evaluation. It's all about the small things. Details matter because the devil is in the details. Very few watches have a similar feature. The most famous watches is probably the Omega Ploprof. The Prof? The Omega Ploprof. <laughs> That's a funny name. Ploprof. Now, the Ploprof is in a totally different price category. And the same goes for Tudor Black Bay P01. And then there's the Yema Superman. And that's quite the same price category. The main reason I love this feature is pretty basic. I hate vessels on the loose. However, if I went back to the stone age of timekeeping and used this as a diver's watch in the true essence of the word diver's watch, I wouldn't feel confident with a watch without this kind of feature. Because the chances are that the bezel would actually tell me the wrong time is pretty high. And I know for safety reasons, it would say I spent more time than I actually have, but still, it's a matter of principles. These are my principles. If you don't like them, I have others. If you know other watches with this feature, let me know in the comments. Now for the design. Whew, the Tetra Decacon bezel is also a design element that makes this a watch unlike anything else. I'll say that again. Tetra Deconal, Tetra Decon, and I can never get it right. Anyways, it means 14 sides. The bezel insert is aluminum. It's not the most scratch resistant material on the planet. It will be interesting to see how it holds up over the years. But so far, so good. And thanks for all the fish. Apart from the awesome bezel look feature, the design and the dial are the main attractions on this watch for me. The case is all beautifully polished 316L stainless steel. Now, all polished is quite unusual for a tool watch like this. However, it's true to the original. And as you can see, my watch has gotten some hit marks already after I dropped it on the bathroom floor tiles. My heart stopped beating for a brief second, but all the watch got was a few scratches on the bezel and the lug. So we're still good. The watch actually took the beating and begged for more. No, of course it didn't. It didn't beg for more. Watches don't beg for more. 
This is a classic three-handed diver's watch design with great legibility. The polished and loomed hands are plongeur hands, the broad arrow hour hand and sword-shaped minute hand, plus the arrow type second hand. The indices are button-shaped and the minute track, the text and the logo are all printed white. The dial also features two lines that intersect in the shape of a cross through the dial center. And personally, I really appreciate this design element. The text says Certina Automatic above the center and DS Super PH500M below the center. It's all very well balanced. The date window with a black date on a white background makes total sense in this monochrome diver's watch design. Certina is absolutely crushing it with this design. The supplied nylon strap is made from recycled materials from the ocean. This makes totally sense given the brand's commitment to the ocean conservation efforts, such as sponsoring the Sea Turtle Conservancy. I really respect it when brands get these kind of things right and actually makes a difference. Yeah, it's probably all about branding, but still, it's better to try and to actually make a difference than to just don't give a shit, isn't it? The strap looks great and adds a bit of color to the otherwise monochrome color palette. Well, yeah, gray is not actually a color, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, it adds a bit of variation. The strap is of superb quality, and it's the best NATO strap I ever met so far. But it adds additional three millimeters to the thickness. So I often like to change to a single pass NATO or a rubber strap, which makes it wear a whole lot of slimmer. The dimensions. The diameter is 43 mm, the lug to lug 48.5, the lug width is 20 mm, the height is 15 mm, it weighs in at 108 grams on the supplied nylon strap. So it's quite a chunky watch spec wise. The lugs aren't very long and the case and lugs are slightly curved. So contrary to the specs, this watch wears super well on the wrist. So do not let the dimensions fool you. Perhaps unless you have wrists on the smaller end of the spectrum. The glass is flat sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating. And the specifications don't tell you how many layers and where they are applied, but they're not at all idiots over at Certina. I'm assuming they're all applied on the inside. The loom is Super Luminova and it's pretty good. It lasts basically all night, even though it probably won't win any loom war battle. The C for Certina sign and screw down crown is on the smaller side it's only 6 millimeters, and it's protected by the case, so it will not dig into your wrist. It can be a little hard to operate until you get the hang of it, but I have no real issues with it, and I appreciate the quality feel of it. But also, I can understand that some might find it a bit tricky. The case back has the double security turtle engraved and includes all the specification. It looks good, doesn't it? We like and don't like so much. I love the retro yet modern reinterpretation. With all the improvements to the original, the dial, the case, the hands, the excessive water resistance, the 80 hour power reserve, it all makes this a true tool watch from a well respected brand with rich history at a very competitive price level. The strap is great, even though it adds some height. And of course, the Bessel lock ensures that this has a special place in my heart. Of course, there's always room for improvement. Like I said, it's a chunky watch. So losing a millimeter or two, that certainly wouldn't suck. The same goes for me. I would like to lose two millimeters too. Not on the height, but on the, you know. Now the movement. Mine is not the most accurate. And plus five to plus 10 seconds daily. That's not great. That's like borderlining my tolerance. I'd like to see a small piece of color variant somewhere and perhaps not the whole hand, like on this DS Super PH 1000 meter they just released. Just like a hand tip or some color detail, just to make it a little bit more interesting to watch. And the crown? Well, one more millimeter, and I guess it would be called perfect. If the swatch group would be a little bit more open and transparent, a Swiss company being more open and transparent, yeah, that's gonna happen when the hell freezes over. But still, why don't they tell us about how many layers of anti-reflective coating there is. Well, why don't they have any more pictures of this uh, movement anywhere? My conclusion, it has a history. It has its own identity. It has terrific specifications. It has a purpose. It's a serious tool watch. And I think most 
diver watch enthusiast would really appreciate this watch. I consider it a keeper and I have no plans to sell it. So there we are. Thanks for watching. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss out my next video about affordable watches. And also make sure to catch this video. It's pretty good. Take care. Stay safe. Peace out.